Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is about DevOps versus SRE. So this is a very interesting video. I'm going to share a lot of insights. What is the reason for making this video? So watch the video till the end. Before I jump onto the video, I would like to make a small request. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do subscribe and click on the notifications button. Now, coming to the topic, DevOps versus SRE. The reason why I'm doing this video is most of you people know that uh, of late, very recently, I started uh, taking sessions on TopMate uh, just to uh, have an interaction with my subscribers. And there were a lot of uh, bookings on the TopMate, which were very specific to resume review and career guidance. And I've noticed that most of the people, even though they want to target DevOps, they have a lot of SRE stuff in it. And when I asked, why do you add uh, just SRE uh, keywords in your resume? The answer that I get is, you know, there are, we are also trying for SRE positions. So kind of people with DevOps experience trying to uh, jump into SRE jobs or probably you haven't worked with SRE in the past, but you still are trying to uh, try your luck with SRE positions. So I've decided to make a video where I'll explain the clear difference between DevOps and SRE. Who can apply for SRE job roles and what is the criteria to be a SRE engineer. So this is today's video and most of the my most of my videos are uh, specific to DevOps and people who have been following my channel, they know like, you know, what is the uh, content that I'm making on DevOps, what is DevOps and why DevOps. But today's video, I'll focus more on who has to apply for SRE. Now, coming to SRE. SRE is a site reliability engineering that most of you people already know. Now, the difference between DevOps and SRE is that if you want to apply for SRE, you need to have very good understanding of few things. Like you need to have an understanding of observability, monitoring, because as an SRE engineer, you tend to create a, you know, uh, a reliable platform where you try to understand your system using some uh, tools like Prometheus. You continuously monitor your system, send out alerts, send off notifications, uh, and try to understand how your system is, right? So you deal with systems, reliability and stability. And then you need to also have some good experience with coding. The reason why you need to have experience with coding in SRE and scripting in DevOps. Do you understand the difference? Scripting in DevOps and coding in SRE positions. Why you need coding experience in SRE positions? Most of the applications these days are deployed on platforms like Kubernetes. And when you are on platforms like Kubernetes, you know, as an SRE engineer, you'll be expected to write some Go language or Python. Mostly, uh, you know, looking at the applications these days, Golang is much preferred. So you have to write some Golang applications, probably Kubernetes controllers uh, with the reconciliation logic or Kubernetes operators in specific, again, to address the reconciliation or how do you deploy your applications? Uh, what is happening if the deployment goes down or someone tweaks your deployment? So these kind of uh, simple uh, uh, applications, Kubernetes uh, operators or controllers is expected to be written by SRE engineers. So you should have some good experience with coding as well. Whereas as a DevOps engineer, your focus would be on automation, writing some simple scripts. Probably you need to have some experience with Groovy scripting, shell scripting, Python scripting. So this is where your experience lies and very important as a DevOps engineer. So this is a clear cut difference between DevOps and SRE. And then once this is done, you need to have very strong idea and experience with the production systems. Okay. So you might be a Linux administrator or you might be a systems uh, engineer or system administrator. But as an SRE engineer, you know, you need to deal with a lot of applications on the production system, their uptime, their downtime. You have to be on on call a lot of times as a SRE engineer. So where, you know, if something is going wrong, as a SRE engineer, you should be in a position to address the production issues. You have to take some critical decisions. You have to continuously create uh, these alerts and monitoring for your production system. So it is very important as an SRE engineer, as a SRE engineer to have good idea of how applications behave in production. Okay. That means you need to have some high level understanding of design of your applications. Probably a, a very good example uh, is if you are a SRE engineer at Google, how does Gmail handle this millions of concurrent requests and still Gmail is always up and running. 
right? And if you are a, a SRE engineer at Instagram or if you are an SRE engineer at Netflix, so understand how this high level design is working. If you have a future aspiration of uh, becoming an SRE engineer, then these are some of the things that you have to understand. And then once this is done, the other important aspects of SRE engineer is you need to uh, you need to have experience with uh, systems like Prometheus, ELK stacks, and uh, you need to have good idea of how Loki works, uh, Thanos works. So the reason why these tools are important is because they handle the monitoring of systems and they can immediately provide you information. Okay, uh, this is when your application is behaving strange. This is when your application is going down. This is when your application seems to go down, right? So all of these things, you get the information from these tools. So if you are a SRA engineer, you have to strictly focus on understanding in deep the details of these tools like Prometheus, uh, Grafana, Loki, ELK Stack, Thanos, all of these tools will help your understanding on uh, systems much better. And after that, you also need to have very, very good experience on Kubernetes because these days, 60% of applications are on Kubernetes or, you know, uh, most of the applications that people are trying to deploy on Kubernetes. Previously, you might be uh, doing uh, production support on virtual machines or production support on any other platforms. But as an aspiring uh, SRE engineer, now your focus has to be towards Kubernetes. So you need to have good understanding of how Kubernetes works. Then you need to have good understanding of scalability, high availability. You need to have understanding of uh, reliability. These are some of the three things. I mean, these are some of the things which you need to have good understanding of. What is high availability? How do you make my system highly available? How do I make my system highly scalable? How do I make my system highly reliable so that, you know, customers rely my application? So these are, again, a few things that you have to take care as SRE engineer. So see, these are some key concepts. Apart from this, if you want to become an SRE engineer, then you have uh, awesome books by Google. So if you just search SRE books by Google, you get the information of uh, SRE books. I can also put that in the description. Uh, you can check for the books links in the description. One is SRE workbook and uh, the other one is the SRE book, which explains you about uh, how as an SRE engineer, you take care of SLAs, which is service level agreements, how you take care of SLOs, which is service level objectives. So the whole point of SRE engineering is making your systems reliable, right? So a customer who comes to you, you have to explain them clearly that these are my service level objectives that I'm going to provide you. And this is my service level agreement. So you can, I can sign this service level agreement with you stating that my application is 98% of the times available. My application can receive 1 million requests and still my application can be up and running. This is our error budget. 0.5% of the request is our error budget and we are trying to improve it in the future. So these are some of the things that you have to take care of SRE engineering. So do not just mention uh, SRE in your profile and do not try for two jobs. One is DevOps and one is SRE and just let me send my profile to both of it and whichever gets picked, it is fine. You might, you know, some of the uh, positions as an SRE engineer, even uh, there are some companies which are not very clear about what they want from SRE engineer and they just add topics like CI, CD, they just add some other topics and you might get selected as a DevOps engineer for a SRE position. But, you know, it's very difficult to survive because you don't have all of these things. SRE is a mindset. SRE is an approach. And very important thing is there is a, a keyword, uh, you know, very good line uh, in SRE which states, the success for your application, I mean, the prerequisite for success of your application is availability. So this mindset or this culture has to be built before you try for SRE positions. Do not just try because there are some matching uh, keywords in your job uh, description. I mean, in the job description and in your profile, there might be some fancy keywords that might match like Kubernetes, Terraform, uh, sometimes CI, CD might match in your profile. But no, that's exactly not uh, your cup of tea. So if you have aspiration to become SRE engineer, follow the things that I have just mentioned. You know, if you follow all of these steps, then eventually, yeah, you will get uh, good at it and you can uh, become a SRE engineer, but not randomly trying for SRE jobs. So I hope you found today's video informative and uh, I'm going to make a complete video on SRE. 
uh, I don't know when, uh, how soon it is, but I'll make a, a handbook or probably I'll make a video which states SRE zero, uh, like where do you start from SRE and how to become a SRE engineer. I will also plan to invite someone on, onto our channel and explain about uh, SRE engineering, job description for SRE engineering, how to crack SRE interviews, all of these things. Uh, but yeah, I don't have a clear timeline at this point of time. So thank you so much for watching today's video. I'll make more and more such informative videos for you people. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Thank you so much. Uh, see you all in the next video. Take care.